Hello, everyone. Oh my goodness. If you have seen my last video, you will know that it has been a struggle for the last couple of months, but I'm super happy to bring this video to you because we just finished up one week in Bonaire and this place is beautiful. There, there is absolutely no words. To be honest with you, I really wish I had booked here for two weeks. So stay tuned. I'm going to explain everything you can do in Bonaire if you're not into scuba diving. So we'll start off with how unbelievably hot it is here. Um, so we left Canada and it was about 10 degrees Celsius. Was that in Fahrenheit? 50, something like that. Anyways, we got here and the daytime highs were 31, 32, feel like 38 to 40 with the humidity. So we settled into our place had a couple of drinks to celebrate our vacation and got ready. So when we arrive to this airport, you have um, to get a visa um, on entry. So we did, and it's required by everybody. It's not a, if you're Canadian or American or whatever, $75, I think, for it. And but the airport is the tiniest airport. So it kind of reminds me of Windsor. Um, it's small, uh, but this one here is obviously way more cute. Um, it's super colorful and it's lit up like crazy. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it is for Christmas or if it's always decorated like this, but it is, is really, really freaking cute. So before we get into like what we kind of did, I'm going to give you a couple of fun facts about Bonaire. Bonaire is the ABC Islands and it's in the southern part of the Caribbean. It is part of Aruba, Bonaire and Carousel. Now Bonaire is a Dutch island. They speak um, Dutch and Pompimento, I think it's, it's called, um, and it's part of the Netherlands. The main export for Bonaire is salt, which again is probably one of the reasons that brings a lot of tourism here is the salt pans. They are, they're incredible. I mean, they're gorgeous, gorgeous pink. And then you look on the other side and it is this beautiful, bright crystal blue water. And it's a really interesting drive. That is one of the main sources of income for Bonaire. The next obviously is, is tourism. A huge place obviously for scuba diving. Um, but like I said, this video is going to be, oh God, I'm sweating so bad. For those who are not into scuba diving, um, I think the reason why it's so big for scuba diving here is because everything is shore accessible. So you don't have to get a tour, you don't have to do boat tours. The reef system that surrounds the island here is probably 50 meters off of shore. And it's great, again, for even those who don't, and you just want to snorkel or you just want to hang out at the beach. The beaches here are beautiful. The only thing is though, is there's not a lot of sandy beaches. So unless you go over to say Klein Beach or Klein Island, which is no name beach, which is a beautiful sand beach, there's probably two, maybe three other ones that are sand. Everything else is this rugged coral. So we had rented a apartment here, which is new. 
but it came with a full kitchenette, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and it is absolutely stunning. The apartments here are right across the street from the ocean, so you wake up to beautiful views and views and have the most gorgeous sunsets. And with the kitchenette, we decided that we were gonna do a lot of cooking and stuff ourselves. We were still gonna try some of the local foods, of course, but we were trying to save a little bit. Um, we went to do some grocery shopping and their grocery store is gorgeous. But I will say, compared to Canadian prices, it wasn't a whole heck of a lot different, but there were things that were extremely different. Ugh like orange juice, and I mean, I love my glasses of orange juice every day, but I didn't get it, because it was like $17 or, so. it was just atrocious. So these roads were a little difficult to get used to because they're a little rough. Um, and you also, you go down into like one lane areas and it's just one strip of concrete so if a car is coming towards you, you then have to um, put two wheels on this side, they put two wheels on their side, and then just, it's, it's a little crazy. There are actually really only four main roads in Bonaire, so it didn't take long for us to get used to driving around or anything like that. So our first stop was actually just across the street from where we are, which was Bachelor's Beach. And this beach is, it's really pretty. It is actually really pretty. They have a nice little set of stairs that goes down where you can go in and you can do some snorkeling. The, unfortunately the coral here is, um, is pretty bleached out, but there's still quite a bit of fish that you can see. And the coral, like I said, it's, it's, it's not as vibrant as some of the other areas, but it was still quite nice. So our next stop was the salt pans, which I was explaining to you earlier. There are this vibrant pink. It is, it is absolutely gorgeous to see. It is just different. I mean, we don't have anything like that back home, so I always like different. So then further up the road, you're gonna come up to the salt pier, which is a huge diving spot. So next up was um, a little bit of a sad history area for Bonaire. Um, during the slavery periods, I think it was 1850, fortunately they were used in the salt pans. One of the bigger known things for tourism is the slave huts and it wasn't just for slaves but primarily that's what it was for it was a sleeping quarter and a place for the slaves to to keep their personal belongings while they were here and there's two sets the first one is the white huts um and then the second one was the the red ones when slavery was abolished, that was one of the things, but it was also used, not just for slavery, it was also used as an imprisonment if you did something wrong, um, that you were, this was your punishment, was that you had to stay in these huts. Now, there are some beaches um, in between, so one of them is Pink Sand Beach, but I'll give you a little tip. I didn't see a whole heck of a lot of pink sand there, but a little bit ways up, and I'll show you here on the map, and just before where the windsurfing is, the pink, the sand here is is actually more pink um, than Pink Sand Beach. So maybe it was just the timing that we had gone, but it was, it's really interesting. And the kite surfing beach, which we nicknamed Mamoa Beach because there was a guy that was kite surfing while we were hanging out there and he was identical to Jason Momoa. So we ended up calling it Momoa Beach. It's just like our own little thing. Day three. Day three was a little fun in the sun and some snorkeling for me. 
Jody's not really big into snorkeling, but she does love her beach time. So we made our way um, to the Salt Pier, which I was told if you get there early enough, there are turtles. Um, we are made our way down there. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the seagrass area. I know they were talking about it, but I couldn't find it. So I just went straight over to the pier and checked out the coral and the fish, and it was, it was interesting. It, I love the underwater world. I think it is just, it's a beauty of its own. But yeah, the pier, it, it was really cool to see. And I could see why divers absolutely love it here because there's so many piers. But the problem was that the water was pretty rough. So I didn't stay in there too long. I kind of got tossed around a lot. But then we made our way to Invisibles, which literally turned into a huge, a huge, huge joke because I got in there and I swam and I swam and I, there was nothing. I don't know what I was supposed to look for. The water was murky um, due to the high winds, but I, I think it's called the Invisibles because there's nothing there to see except white sand. And if I'm wrong, please tell me down below. If I miss something there, make a comment down below and, and let me know because I know I'm coming back here. There was a gentleman that was there and he had told us that to go up to a thousand steps. Again, it was rough, but this area was a little different because it's not sandy. So it's all coral. The beach is coral. So if you're going to come here, make sure you bring a chair if you are not going to be going into the water and doing snorkeling. This, for some reason, I just fell in love with it. And I ended up coming back to a thousand steps just because of that. It is absolutely gorgeous. The problem was my GoPro died on one of the days. And but I did miss um, filming a couple of the turtles, uh, a trumpet fish, and um, the octopus. The octopus was incredible. It was this vibrant purple. I don't even know how to describe it. It was my first time ever seeing an octopus, so I got pretty pumped up. Sad that I didn't get it on video though. So this day on the way back, um, it was probably about two o'clock and we were getting pretty hungry. So we were making our way back and we stopped at this food truck and the reason i stopped here is because one of the things i wanted to try and bonaire was perfect place for it was lionfish this place here is so good the lionfish was phenomenal chef tam i gotta tell you so next up was the next day we decided to head out to the oh Washington Slag by, and I probably butchered that, I'm really sorry, National Park. So this is the National Park. Um, it's located on the north part of the island. It is a massive national park. So November is, unfortunately, it's rainy season. And by rainy season, I mean like you'll have afternoon downpours. For the last four days, we actually didn't have any, but the first couple days we would have downpours, light showers, beautiful rainbows. But unfortunately, up in the mountain areas, it rains a little bit more. So uh, I'm going to let the video from that day speak for itself. So today we are at the Washington Segby National Park in Bonaire. And well, the whole plan for today was to drive around the park, mainly in the air conditioning because it is yeah, stifling. That's the word to use. It's a scorcher. It's so hot. But unfortunately, they've had quite a bit of rain and the trail, the driving trail, there's a vehicle that's stuck. So unfortunately, we had to do the walking tour. But so far, the park is really gorgeous. There's tons of cacti, like all throughout, like different types of thorn bushes so of course having to watch our steps because uh well i don't want to be picking those out of my burnt body today just heading up to the first one i think is the blowhole probably should have brought that map because i think he said what was it joda an hour and a half so an hour and a half to do the um the entire trail it's just a loop trail it's so our first stop I thought was the blowhole, but it's actually not. Hopefully you can hear me because it's bon air and it's windy. But this wall was actually built 
to keep the animals um, inside and it now stands as like a wall for the national park, which is really kind of cool. It's actually made out of coral. So obviously to withstand the, the seas and everything and the salty air, but pretty neat. And it actually runs all along the side here and it's, it's really cool actually. <gasps> oh, that's a wobbly one. <laughs> So I'm not sure if you can hear me because as you can see from my hair, it is super, super freaking windy. We just saw the blowhole and one of the coves, which was actually really cool and beautiful. And the water is so vibrant blue. But this is my tip <laughs> for anyone coming on this trail. One, don't wear flip flops. We were not planning at all to do the trail today. It was to do in the car out of the car but this trail is insane it's like it's you're walking on old coral but really it looks like lava and i've walked on lava in hawaii and this is there's no lava on this island but this is very similar it's very sharp it is not meant for sandals so if you are planning to come to the national park one thing that you want to make sure that you're do that you bring like a hiking sandal or a running shoe something preferably with a thick sole so no um all stars nothing like that definitely no thin rubber soles because this is it's painful well we bailed a little early but we're making our way to the front gate. It was just, oh, we were not expecting to be doing this much walking. Wasn't dressed for it. Definitely didn't have the proper shoes. So we're now back on the more gravel path that takes us out to the exit. So, and it's really hot. What was it today, Joe? 38 with the humid? 38. This is like a flashback of Utah. If you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. Some of the best and most amazing trails were there. So and we finished off the park and made our way back. And the day before at the food truck, um, it's called actually Cactus Blue. Sorry, forgot to mention that before. Um, they had told us about their burgers. So they had said, if we liked the lion, lionfish, then we were definitely gonna like their burgers. And they were not wrong. The burgers were, they were so good. I mean, So on day five, we decided to head out to the southern east side of the island. And unfortunately, there I wanted to go and see there's a beautiful lighthouse and some old ruins out there, but I don't know if they if it was the rain or what it was, but the major portion of that road was closed off. So we had gone over to more of the eastern side to check out a couple of beaches over there and um, check out some windsurfing. We didn't try it. I have no upper body strength. I don't have core strength. And I seen grown men struggle with trying to keep the kite up and there's just no way, no way I would be able to do it. But it was really entertaining to watch the, it's, it's a sandy beach, but again, it's a great place if you do want to learn how to do some windsurfing or kite surfing or whatever this is. I have no idea. I don't even know what it's called, but if you know, leave a comment below and tell me is is it worth it? Because maybe one day I'll try. So the next day we actually decided this was the day that we we're going to go to Klein, but we picked a different um place to take the, the ferry out of. So the ferry goes from 
three different places in Bonaire. And if you are driving and you're not staying downtown, I would suggest going out of this spot here. It's a lot easier. It's the Water Sports Center. Um, they take you over to where the ferry is downtown anyways. And the ferry ride is gorgeous. It's $25 round trip per person but you're getting like an hour ferry ride there and back. And the views from the shore are there. It's a tour of its own. Even just going over into Klein, it's a tour of its own. And I would highly suggest that because the shoreline was stunning. The different types of homes and apartments and, and I'm guessing probably hotels and stuff like that. It was really nice to see. So then we got over to Klein Beach, which you pull up to what they call No Name Beach. And this, it's a huge amount of sand here and it's gorgeous. Now, normally, if you pick the right ferry, you can get a drop off snorkel. So they'll drop all your belongings off at the beach, you run back on, and then they drop you off out in the in the, the diving area, the snorkeling area. Unfortunately, that day, again, it was super rough. So I just made the walk along and it's not sandy. So you will hit some coral areas. It's a little rough on the feet. So I will tell you if it is rough, it's pretty murky up near the shore. But what I loved about this and Thousand Islands was gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but this was completely different. Um, you swim to the on the other side of the wall and on the other side of this wall is a sheer drop off. Check this out. As you've seen, it is absolutely stunning and a, an underwater amazement. I just, I don't even have words for it. There's just so much to see and yeah, it was pretty cool. So once we finished off at Klein, we made our way back, made ourselves a quick lunch and wanted to spend the rest of the afternoon hanging out with some jackasses, the donkeys of Bonaire. There is a adorable sanctuary for the donkeys. Now there's about 1,100 or 1,200 donkeys on the island. And the sanctuary is a place now that has just over 800 donkeys where they feed them, house them, and obviously give them medical attention. Unfortunately, there was a five week old that was hit by a car um, they were able to get the little donkey and its mom to the sanctuary um, where they were able to cast him up. But the drive around the sanctuary was amusing to say the least. It was, it was feeding time for them. So we weren't able to give them any treats. And of course, every single time they came up to the car and we didn't have any treats, um, they huff and puffed and kind of just walked away. If you are here, please go down and donate um, your time and money to them so that they can continue uh, taking in the donkeys of the island. So one of the other things too, of course, to get some last minute souvenirs or do some shopping or check out some waterfront restaurants and some of the coffee 
sorry, cafes around here. Definitely check out downtown. The area here is really quaint. And of course, while well, in November, they are actually decorating for Christmas. So it was really nice to see. The one thing that I really liked about Bonaire too is how festive the, that they are. Every roundabout had a different type of scenery in it and it was really cute to see. So, so I'm going to wrap this up. It is our last day here. I am sweating really bad and I need to go and get myself in the pool and enjoy the last couple of hours that I have on this stunning island. So I'll leave it here, everyone. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you think anyone will benefit from this video, don't forget to share. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Bye everyone.